the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present The Pacific Story. In the mounting fury of world conflict, events in the Pacific are taking on ever greater importance. Here is the story of the Pacific and the millions of people who live around this greatest sea. The drama of the people whose destiny is at stake in the Pacific War. Here, as another public service, is the tale of the war in the Pacific and its meaning to us and to the generations to come. The Yangtze. And the way the river is rising, we will Stop not Stop your able... babbling, too, and pay out the chain, as much as we have of it. We must hang on here as long as we can. Oh, ha! Pay out the anchor chain! Pay out the anchor chain! Slowly! Slowly! The river was the color of red brass. The sky is the color of lead. Every timber of my junk strained against the terror of the current. In all my years on the river, never had I seen it so savage. We were coming down the river, down from Chongqing with a cargo of tea and sesame oil and cow bones. A thousand miles and more above Chongqing, the mountain snows had melted and the waters came raging down to the Yangtze. We could see the river rising. The current swept us along like a leaf. will soon be to Wushan Gorge, my mother. Yes, my son. Can we get through the 24 miles of the gorge without being dashed to pieces like an eggshell against the boulders? The river was carrying us down into the gorge. We will try to hold on one until the high water goes down. Yes, my mother. The current thundered against the sides of the junk as the anchor took hold. The anchor chain is paid out, old one. Now we must pray that the chain will not part. The waters are rising. Is the cargo secure? The cargo is secure, but the crew is uneasy. Have the crew stand by. All night? All night. Yes, old one. As darkness fell, the river became a gleaming torrent. The junk strained against the rushing waters. I could feel the anchor dragging. In the half-darkness... Witch's Mountain hovered over the place where the river cuts down through Wushan Gorge. The anchor chain has parted. The anchor chain is broken. We lost our anchor, old one. Bring the junk around downstream. We're heading down into the gorge. Man that killer! Swing high right! Swing the tail! Jump to it! Bring that boom around! We floundered helplessly in the raging torrent, slipping backwards, struggling to bring her around before we entered the winding gorge. As we headed between the towering walls, the blackness of the night closed in around us. Boulder on the left! Boulder on the left! Swing her right! Hard right! Through that night, we fought to keep from being smashed against the boulders and against the walls of the Wushan Gorge. In my 50 years on the river, I had learned every turn and boulder, but my old eyes could not see them. We crashed and bumped our way through the 24 miles of the gorge. The river is still rising, old one. Yes, higher than I have ever seen it. I have never seen the water so high in the gorge. The lowlands must be flooded. Yet on rapids ahead. Yet on rapids. Keep her close to the wind. Oh, Start rocks on the left. Keep her mid spring. Here where the Yangtze narrows, the raging waters were churning up almost over the rocks on the left. 
churning up and boiling over these most dangerous rapids on the river. Sharp rocks on the left. Keep her clear. On your hard right. We were heavy with water. We moved like a waterlogged duck. Bring her around there, too. Give me that tiller. Now, bring her around. The swirling waters carried us toward the rocks, then caught us and swung us around and out once more into the stream. The waters were rising. At Yi Chang, the floodwaters had risen 50 feet and were still rising. Ten miles below Yi Chang, we went through the last of the gorges. As we came out, we saw the water overflowing the riverbed. We sailed on through Shanxi and Yochao to Hangau. The water was still rising. Brought your cargo safely through from Chungking, Chinli? Except the part damaged by water. There's no place to la- unload it here at Hankow. Nor any place between here and Shanghai, I am told. That is right. The water is higher here than any man has ever seen it. You are fortunate. I have spent all my life on the river. Yes. Already it is reported 140,000 are dead. Nowhere is life so cheap as here. Ah, but think of the property loss. $300 million damage to crops. And besides, there is damage to all other property. Where can I unload? There is no place to unload until the water goes down. This was my home, as much as any place had ever been my home. I was born on a riverboat. My father spoke of Hankow as home. We traveled up and down the river, but we always came back here. We had pigs and chickens and two cats aboard our boat. My father tied a pig bladder to each of my three brothers so that if they fell overboard, they would float at least a little. They tied nothing around me because I was a girl. One of my brothers drowned anyway. The other two died in the war. My father always talked about hand cow. Six hundred miles from here is the mouth of the river. Someday we will sail down there. I never saw the mouth of the Yangtze until I sailed down there years later with my husband. Once, long ago, Hankow was completely destroyed. I learned that was during the Taiping Rebellion in 1857. Hankow was a good place. It's the most important place in the tea trade in this whole part of China. I used to wonder how big China was. All I knew was the Yangtze. Yes, Hankow was a good place. Look at all the boats. I used to sit on our junk and look at all the boats lined up side by side as far as I could see. Babies were being born in the boats every day, just as I was born in a boat. Boys and girls were growing up on them, and people were dying on them. This is the place to live. We carry sugar and cotton up the river from Hankow, away up to Chongqing, and even beyond, up to Bingshan. We sail as we like. We see the country. We see many interesting people. And then we load pine bark and lacquer and straw rope and anything else they have and bring it down here to Hanko. What could be better? I married Pai, one of us river people. We had just come back to Hankow in 1911 when the revolutionists came. Listen, Jin Lee. You hear that shooting? Yes, I hear it, Pai. I have heard it said they would come here to Hankow. Take the children below and we'll move up the river. Yes, Pai. I took the children below. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yes, Pai. What is it? He didn't answer. I ran up on deck. And there he was, lying there. Jimmy. Oh, oh, they have... Oh. Blood was streaming from his chest. Bullet. He'd been hit by a bullet from the shore. Oh, I, I. (laughs) 
After that, I sailed the junk and brought up my children. The girl died. The older boy was killed in the war. The younger boy, Juan, grew up on the junk with me. Look at that, my mother. The farmer's planting a crop down there in the river flat. That is the third crop this year, my son. What will happen if the river floods before they can harvest their crop? They will lose it. Juan said nothing. He'd always watch the farmers from the river. Watch those in the lowlands beside the river. And watch those on the high cliffs above the river. Look at those farmers up above us, my mother. Yes, they're very hard workers. If, if they should fall off their land up on those cliffs, I don't see how they could live. Perhaps they could not, Juan. See the fruits and vegetables they grow up there? Yes. When the river is at high water, it comes right up to the edge of their farms. Huh. It must be very good to be a farmer. Juan talked to the men who know about farming. They told him many things. There is no land in all the world so fertile as this Yankee Valley. It has been worked for thousands of years, and still it is good land. As we have gone up and down the river, I, I have seen farmers all along the shore working in the earth. It is their life. It must be the life of millions. It is. The Yangtze Basin is immense. 700,000 square miles. And as the Nile is the very life of 20 million Egyptians and Sudanese, so our Yangtze is the life of 200 million Chinese. Nearly half the people of China. Yes, nearly half the people of China. When the waters went down after that great flood in 1931, Juan went ashore. He had been born on the river as I had, and as my people had before me. He had been brought up on our junk as we sailed up the river from Hankow to Chongqing and Pingshan, and back again to Hankow, up the river and down year after year. I belong to the earth, my mother. You are a riverboat dweller, my son. There is nothing for me on the river. Do you wish to go ashore? I, I do not know. He went ashore and helped in repairing the damage done by the river. You need not carry so much earth in your baskets, Juan. Uh, I must carry my part. Yes, all of us must. For this is a task for millions of workers like us. What I carry is like a grain of sand on a seashore. It is the grains of sand one by one that we build our dikes and canals. Yes. From the junk, I could see the workers. Thousands of them around Hankow carrying baskets of earth hanging from poles across their shoulders. Men from other lands came up the river to see them and to see what the flood had done. They wrote what they saw. Literally millions of Chinese are working in the Yangtze Valley to repair the damage done by the flood. They have almost no tools. They carry the earth to patch the dikes and the canals in the same sort of baskets suspended from poles that have been used in China for thousands of years. With the raging waters of the Yangtze washed through the dikes, they are filling into great breaches, basketful by basketful. They must rebuild more than 4,000 miles of earthworks. They are swarming over the wrecked dikes. Juan worked the long months until the rebuilding and the patchwork were done. Then when the time came for us to move up the river again, he came aboard the junk to see me. I am going away, my mother. Do you want to get away from the river? No, my mother. I want to learn to do something to help those who live on the river and those who earn their living from the valley of the river. You are a riverboat dweller, my son. I shall never forget that, my mother. I have seen what it can do, and I have worked repairing the damage it has done. And that is what I want to do. Repair broken dikes and canals? No, my mother. 
plan new ones and better ones. No, I do not understand, my son. One who can build dikes that will hold does more for his people than one who leads an army. Yes? He works for the farmers and he works for the river people. And you wish to do that, Juan? Yes. I wish to be an engineer. He went away, downriver to school. We went upriver, up through the Yichang Gorges to Chongqing with hardware and sugar. We brought back herbs and dried mushrooms and peppers and sesame oil. Each time we came back to Hankow, we saw how it was changing. Ah, you are back again, Chin Li. Is your cargo safe? Always you think of your cargo first. A merchant takes care of his business, and his business takes care of him. You need no one to take care of you. Competition is becoming greater here in Hong Kong. Yes? Of course. The weaving mills are expanding. More and more cotton and artificial silk and woolens are being made right here. So more and more people are coming up the river. And with them are coming more merchants. You are just learning what it means to struggle to live. At least you do not have the competition of the Japanese on the river. They are the ones behind the big new iron and steel plants here. And if it were known, they are the ones behind much of the other business here, too. And that is all a merchant in Hankow can do these days. Yes, the river town of Hankow was changing. We could see it from our junks, and we could see it when we went ashore. New and modern things were everywhere. The English and the Americans and the Germans and the French and the Russians came up the river. Look at those ships anchored there. Yes, Chu. There is one from the Jardine line. There is one from Butterfield and Swire. There is a dollar liner from America. Yes. And there is a Japanese boat. And what is that one? Uh, that is one of the Sino-French boats. Boats from everywhere. Here we are, 900 miles up the river, and there are almost as many boats here as in a big seaport. Yes, Jill. How can we, with our poor junks, do business against them? The big ships came and went, more and more of them. And when they came up the river, they brought ideas and information. What could China do if Japan sent her navy up the Yangtze? Japan... The thought was sharp as a dagger. China has no navy to stop her. Was there danger that Japan might strike China? The Yangtze divides China in two. The power that controls the Yangtze controls all central China. The shadow of Japan was falling across China. How do you know, Chu? Word just came across the boats from shore. The fighting has then spread all through. they will come here to Hancock. Shall we sail up River Chinley? We will keep working as if there is no war until the war comes here. We went on carrying cargoes up the river, carrying cargoes down. Juan was downriver, but no word came from him. Others coming upriver told us what was happening below. They bombed Nanking from the air until nothing was left. Then their armies came. They burned the city. And they tortured and slaughtered us by the thousands. I am the only one left of our compound. We went downriver, down below Hankow, to help some of the refugees. We were heavy with the poor wretches. The Japanese are coming up the river. They are coming up the river with their warships. That meant that they would smash Hankow as they had smashed the cities below. Airplane! Airplane! Two, hard right to the bank. Swing or two. Quiet, everyone. Swing your hard right to the bank. They're going to dive on us. They're going to dive on us. Look out! Our top deck was crowded with refugees as they dived on us. They cut us down like sheep. People toward us at Hankow, and the high ones of the government came to us river people for help. In the great area between here and the coast is 90% of all China's industry, 90% of all our machinery. 
We must save that machinery before the invaders reach it. Do they wish us to go down river and bring up the machinery, Chen Li? Let the man talk. To you me. river people with your junks know this river better than any other people on earth. We will go down the river in your junks and we will load the machinery. We will bring it up here in parts. We will bring every piece of machinery that can be saved. How soon can we be ready to sail, Chu? Before noon. Before noon, we were headed downriver with a strong current behind us and our sails creaking in the wind. Killer hard right! Killer hard right! Trim the sail! Trim the sail! For days, we headed downstream, the river dotted with junk. When we got to the river port where the machinery was, waiting on the waterfront, the junks were clustered around like ants. Everyone helped load the machinery onto the junks. Hurry! Hurry! We must get every piece aboard these junks before the Japanese come. Quickly! The Japanese are closing in on the city. Already? The commander told us he could hold them off until we got this machinery loaded. We cannot hold them. The commander says the Japanese will be here before daylight you tomorrow. You must hold them. We'll die before we let them pass. And we will die before we let them take this machinery. Hurry, my people, hurry. The Japanese will be here before daylight. Before the sun rose in the east, we were on our way upstream. Our hold and our decks creaked with the heavy machinery. Pieces and parts piled over every inch of our decks. At daylight, we could see the other junks, all heavy with machinery, making their way upriver. The wind in their sails and their prows fighting against the current. And day and night, we watched the skies for Japanese planes. <laughs> Planes came and bombed and strafed us. We sailed on, our junk with the hundreds of others. At last, we reached Hankow. You cannot unload here. The Japanese warships are coming up the river. As far up as Hankow here? Probably farther. They will try to open the way for their army. Where will we take the machinery? Up to Yi Chang. You must leave at once. The Japanese warships may be here in a few hours. Get the crew together, Chu. We will start at once. Yes, Chin Lee. Ho oh, ha! On deck, all of you! Almost before we were out into the stream, the Japanese warships came. We swung over close to the shore. They have opened fire, Chin Lee. Yes. They're shooting into the city. Is there no mercy in them, Chin Li? No, Chu. Soon their soldiers will land. We will never see Hankow again as we knew it. We can hear the firing all that day as we made our way up the river. At last, we could hear the firing no more. We knew that the city was dead. We went on with our heavy cargo up against the current. Yi Chang. There is Yi Chang. Look. Look at all the machinery there on the waterfront. That must be the machinery brought up by the junks before us. Is it not, old one? Yes, it must. It is good that we are here, or our timbers are bursting with our heavy cargo. We could not go farther. That is right, Chin Lee. Bring her on to the deck, too, and we will start unloading at once. Yes, old one. Ho ha! Killer hard right! Killer hard right! As we swung into the dock, a young man jumped aboard. I could not see his face, but I knew his step. My mother! Oh, my mother. Go on, go on, my son. <laughs> Heavens be thanked, my mother, I have found you. I could say nothing. Uh, they told me in Hankow that you had gone on up here to Yi Chang. We could not unload there. You cannot unload here either. Not here? Look at all the machinery there on the waterfront. Yes, my mother, there are a hundred thousand tons here, but 
All of it must be loaded on boats again and moved through the gorges to the upriver ports and to Chongqing. That's why I have come to help you. But our junk, our junk is almost a part with its great burden. You cannot unload here, my mother. The Japanese are coming up the river. I will go with you. We started upriver for Mi Chang. The raging current through the gorges pounded against us. Then the wind turned against us. Juan and Chu and the others of the crew pulled on the great oars with all that was in them. We moved inch by inch with our heavy machinery against the current. The junk strained and groaned. Then we reached the narrows of the gorges where the towering walls closed in on us and the boiling waters thundered against our prow. We... We can row no more, old one. Then lead out the tow rope. Yes, old one. I will help. Down here, Juan. Ho, ho! Lead out the tow rope! We led out the bamboo rope with its harnesses, and Juan went ashore to be the lead man. Chu stayed aboard to handle the junk with me. With their harnesses over their shoulders, Juan and our deck men strained against the rope. They clung to the narrow pathway on the side of the gorge as they towed the junk against the torrent. Above is the winding curve, old one. Steady on the tiller, too. I have it. The rapids at this curve are savage. Yes, old one. Juan, dig your toes into the pathway on this curve. I, I am hanging on. Hold that tiller, too. Yes. The current has caught us. Oh, uh, it's swinging us back. Uh, uh, oh, oh, there goes Juan. The boat pulled him off the path. Oh, Juan, Juan. He fell down on those rocks. Down there where the current is smashing over the rocks. Oh, Juan. We're swinging around against the boulder, too. Kill her hard left. Hard left. <laughs> One washed lifeless down the gorge as we lay battering against the great boulder. We made our way up to Chungking. There we unloaded our machinery. The other boats that got up that far unloaded their pieces of machinery, too. The machinery was put together and put to work. For China. We are still sailing the Yangtze here, upriver. The Japanese have never got above the Ichang. Someday, we will be going down river again. Down to Ichang and to Hankow. And even beyond that, down to the sea. For we know that the Yangtze is the life stream of China. have been listening to The Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations as a public service to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross-currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. Pacific Story.
story is written and directed by Arnold Markwitz. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. Your principal voice was that of Gran Delano. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>